Welcome to Business Over Beer, where entrepreneurs, small business owners, and people passionate about what they do bring us their stories and their favorite beer. Hosted by Ben Surratt, Jonathan Kaler, and Jason Canope, it's time to get down to business and drink some beer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the second biggest podcast in the Pacific Northwest, still on the heels of those Sasquatch hunters, but I have a feeling this episode will take us to the next level. Of course, this is Business Over Beer. I'm your co-host, Ben Surratt, alongside me live in person and not via the Zoom is the man of the hour. The terror of power. Some people call him the space cowboy. Some people call him man bun. But we, of course, refer to him as Spartacus, Mr. Jonathan Kaler. Happy day, Jonathan. Can't even keep track of the days, man. We're recording on a on a Sunday of all days. I don't know that we've ever recorded on a Sunday. This is uh, pretty exciting. We are at the Clark County Historical Museum. And I can't wait to tell everybody why we're here. Um, but yeah, man, it's a beautiful summer day. We are still kind of in the time of, of COVID. So mm-hmm. we're, we're very safely social distanced, <laughs> live together uh, around a nice big table. But, um, but yeah, I'm excited for uh, today. This is going to be uh, a great episode for our community to learn about the great things that Clark County Historical Museum is uh, all about. And of course, learning a lot about beer. Yes. And speaking of long tables <laughs> in the time of COVID, we have got the gift that keeps on giving. He is the gangsta of Hazeldell Stitches 2.0. Jason Canope, how you feeling, my friend? Welcome to Business Over Beer. Thank you. I'm feeling fantastic. Uh, great day today. Happy to be down here. I grew up in the area, so uh, it's it's pretty cool to see some of the things in the museum that uh, I've, I've seen as a kid. So... Uh, Really cool to be here. I'm excited to hear more about it. So, and to come back again sometime and and have a look around. Sure. And spend more time just looking around. So, but you know, we got a great guest here today. We got Bradley Richardson with the Clark County Historical Museum. He's the uh, museum administrator and uh, historian. How you doing, Bradley? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah. Thanks for having me on today. You are sure welcome. And uh, we we don't want to downplay that. You are you're the big wig here. You're the executive <laughs> yeah. director, right? Oh, shucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's that's what I get told. <laughs> well, and the the only reason I really make light of that is because I I I love that you started here at the Clark County Historical Museum as a volunteer, yeah. right? And have yeah. and have been how long have you been with with the museum? Just about ten years in yeah. total. Yeah, so ten years all the way through to now to now run of the joint. So that is just I just love that man. Yeah, no, I, I've been incredibly lucky, and you know, on top of it, uh, you know, I'm born and raised here in, in Clark County. I grew up out in the Camas Washougal area, and so being an executive director at a museum in your home county is is pretty rare. Uh, so I, yeah, I just from this last ten years being able to do this has been just incredible. That is so cool, man. Well, I I'll be honest with you, I've driven by the Clark County Historical Museum probably hundreds of times. Mm-hmm. Um, there are signs out there this way to the Clark County Historical Museum. Yes, there it is. But I have never actually stepped foot in here, um, which I'm embarrassed to say. I mean, I've lived here for, for almost 10 years. And, you know, to know that something is there, uh, but not go in. Um, and, and now I feel like what, what, a, what a waste of time that, to, to not have taken appreciation for everything that um, has happened in Clark County all these years. And, and to see the operation you guys are running firsthand is just so cool. Um, so why don't you just kind of give us the 50,000 foot view of, you know, what you do and what the Clark County Historical Museum is all about. 
Yeah, so I mean, me, you know, obviously going from volunteer to director, and in this role today, I am essentially the main administrator, and I'm the main fundraiser for the for the institution. And you know, a big part of my job too is the vision for for what we're going to do as a you know as a group. And then you know, we have three other staff, so you know, it's me and, and three other people that basically operate the entire um, institution. Uh, together for you know across the entire county and then we have about 25 volunteers that help us when we're able to be open which right now we're going on about our, our fifth month not open yet in oh, the geez. building but we're still doing all our programs events and exhibits which is the big piece that we do and we're still doing our pre preservation so we have a staff member april busby who is our programs manager and she does all that digital feeds that you're seeing all the walk digital walking tours that you're seeing like she's producing all that stuff our website our marketing all those things so that's kind of her whole wheelhouse is all of these things that we're doing to engage with the community and tell stories out uh, to people across clark county and then gretchen hoyt is our uh, visitor services um, and member services uh, uh, assistant or coordinator and she's working on you know exhibits we're doing a lot of panels for people across the community um, a lot of research requests that we have kind of we're still active in a research library even though we can't get into it and then our collections manager James uh, he is still cataloging and preserving the objects in our collection we actually have him set up at a home station and he is updating our digital uh, system and actually adding paper files digitizing them so that we actually can just type in a keyword and say hey we know we have a you know a hammer from the 1890 or something like that and so those components of you know the events the programs the exhibits and preservation which is the core of what we do we're still doing it all we're just doing it digitally and so right. I'm mm -hmm. just basically uh, lucky enough to oversee an awesome team and I'm still just trying to get people to continue to in invest in us mm, gotcha that's awesome well, I can't wait to hear more about that and more about uh, the vision for and the mission of, of the museum, but this is the Business Over Beer podcast. <laughs> uh, this is the beer portion of the program. We ask all of our guests to bring a beer to share. Uh, have you brought a beer to share on the Business Over Beer podcast? I have. Absolutely. I, I have brought a beer. <laughs> Did you hear that little, <laughs> that, that little suspenseful pause? Man, this, this guy knows how to play it. <laughs> It was a tense moment. <laughs> it was, it was for, for just a second. <laughs> Tell us about your beer. So uh, this beer is a very special beer. It actually relates to the beer exhibit that we have upstairs because Barlow's uh, Public House and Barlow's Brewery is actually one of our sponsors. And we've gotten to know um, the folks over there, and we ended up working with them to actually have a beer label designed based on some history and something from the museum. So I have the Daredevil Davidson uh, wow. pre-prohibition lager here, which actually has a little history and our logo on it. And it's a collab between 5440 and and Barlow's, and it's the first history-based beer in Clark County that I'm aware of. Wow. So this, cool. will, this will be in the museum as an exhibit in like 100 years with your, <laughs> with your face right next to it. <laughs> and, maybe, and maybe pictures of this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Oh, we can only hope. Stranger things have happened. Yes. Wow. All right, prost. prost. We, we have to do the in the the, the, the time of COVID prost. Where we'll I'll do the, the distant. <laughs> Bam. There you go. Do the, do the, do the bottom prosting. <laughs> Boy, that's good. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's really good. I, I stopped in there the other day, actually. Well, just the other day to pick these up, and I asked... Uh, the person at the front at Barlow's was like, "Hey, how's the how's the Daredevil save you know selling? Because I you know I want to know it's doing well." And then she said, "It's it's it's just doing pretty well." I mean, it is so incredibly <laughs> clear. I mean, just I, I can't even get over uh, how clear it is. But it's so light and refreshing, oh. uh, and the aroma. It, it doesn't have that because I'm not a big logger. Me drinker. neither. But I, I know what you're saying. <laughs> um, it doesn't have that like bracing lager right. aroma it's mm. got almost this this fruitiness on the nose that's really appealing mm. yeah but the body of the of the mouth the 
the taste of it, the the mouth feel is so, yeah, it's unique. It's very, it's different. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and with the nose, you know, some lagers have that. I like to call it the state fair smell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has none of that. This is this is just delicious. Yeah, and they and they we just did an opening over at fifty four forty. We did a little talk, you know, obviously just like everything distance. And I was able to talk a little bit about this, but you know, they also discussed the background on why they did this, and because they worked with us on the exhibit, and prohibition was such a huge part of you know that part of the exhibit. They decided to do this pre prohibition lager as a result. So it's, I think it's unique in that sense because you're yeah. probably not finding a lot of those styles. Yeah, for sure. For sure. What do you think, Lager Boy? This should be right up yeah. your alley. Generally, I prefer the Pilsner, but this is this is a damn good lager. It's really I, I'm really good. enjoying it. Uh, <laughs> I, I would go for a Pilsner normally any time, but I, I think this is going to go on the list. I'm going to have to go pick up some for myself and for my dad. Yeah, that's articulate as always. Good job, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bradley, I want to know because uh, I have, like Kaler said, I haven't been in here ever. I've driven by it many, many, many times. But after coming in here and going through the tour that you gave us earlier, thank you, by the way, that was phenomenal. I want to hear more about what you feel about the culture, the beer culture, and explain a little bit more about that. Just kind of go over, like an overview of, of, of what makes Clark County unique with the beer culture here. Well, I think one of the things is that there's always been this sense of history and that it's always been here, Mm. you know, and I mean, always in the sense of like, you know, Hudson's Bay period, like we talked about, you know, you have that early 1825 Hudson's Bay company comes out and they start with barley and hops and the first beer is brewed in European style out here in this area. And even though they don't claim like they're the birth of the the brewing industry, if you want to look at that descent, it's like it's right there. And then from there, you have the growth up to the Star Brewery, which even, you know, brewers all over uh, Clark County, they know about Lucky Lager. They know about Star Brewery. So they're, they're they have like this sense of awareness of history mm-hmm. um, and and they're acting really similar to these early brewers you know they're they're kind of collaborating they're getting together they're trying to experiment they're trying to do new things which was the same thing that was happening with henry weinhardt and you know anton young and with star brewery and hop gold and all of this stuff um and then the marketing piece with like lucky lager like Mm -hmm. lucky lager was big into marketing can releases are huge and so it's it's kind of funny because there's not a direct like you know, bookish like, I know, from 1930 <laughs> until 1950, Lucky Lager had the X style thing. You know, it's not like the brewers know that, but like the culture has just been so sustained that they just are behaving in the same patterns and they have this continuity of history. And it's now like with the exhibit, we have an opportunity to be like, yeah, hey guys, check it out. Like, you have this descent of behavior and in, in history. Yeah, you get to you get and you said it earlier, it's like, man, brewers now, it doesn't matter where they come from, if they're here and they want to brew, you're they're part of history now. Mm-hmm. And you have a kinship with everybody that was before you, everybody now, and everybody in the future. It's I mean, I, I really recommend if you haven't done the tour, you haven't been into the museum, please come down and do it. It it'll it'll give you a new It'll give you new respect for what people have done here, in and not just in beer, but just in Clark County. Period. I love it, man. Seriously. Talk about the role of museums um, and the importance of museums, you know, in local communities, but particularly your museum, which celebrates the history of of our community, the history of our county. You know, it's not an art. It's not just an art museum, or it's not just you know some other sort of garden variety museum this is a museum dedicated to the history of where we all live kind of talk about the role of museums in the community and the the importance of uh like local history and understanding local history for the residents of of the community yeah i mean the role for museums is is so interesting and because there is um I, I would say kind of in history, we've had a bit of a, a, a bad uh, uh, marketing crew for a while in history because a lot of people get out of school and they're like, history is just names and dates and I'm not a part of it. Like that's kind of the perspective I think a lot of people have. And that's no 
that's not out you know any way to slight like history teachers or people because these people are trying to do the best they can with what they have um but the role of your local museum or institution is to be like a center of memory because if you look at um like the functions and the body of our of our society like you have like in the city you have like a city council right and that's kind of like your administrative function it is an administrative function but like it's like the brain right supposedly of of your uh your community that kind of like says like here's what we do supposedly, supposedly. Yeah. <laughs> i'm not trying to say this like you know <laughs> go vote no go vote yeah yeah <laughs> but you know that and then you have like your public works which is like your health care system for the body of the community because it fixes your roads it makes sure that the systems are working so people can flow through it but when it comes to like the actual memory like yeah maybe we keep records as a government system but the actual like grappling with your memory and discourse around what we remember there are no public institutions so what happens is your local county museum your local city museum your local kind of niche topic museum they come in to fill this role to say hey come in and actually read the chapters of the story that you're a part of so you know how to write the next one and that's really our role as institutions is the center of memory and understanding. And that's both in a celebratory way, but then also in a really hard way, like to say like, well, let's look at what we've done and like, did we like everything? Did we not like everything? And, and also to try to help people critically think that there's not these binary things, that mm -hmm. things are all wholesale bad or wholesale good, but that they're, they're complicated and we can come and engage with it and understand it. And I think, that's really what a museum can play the role of first by you coming in and just looking at an exhibit and getting a grounding of like, oh, cool. I had no idea Henry Weinhardt was here. And oh, wow, I didn't know that Lucky Lugger was so big into advertising. And, you know, I didn't know these things were. But then starting to situate yourself and saying like, well, maybe I want to understand this more to help understand where I'm at. And then you start to engage and it grows this amazing relationship with the past that creates stewardship where you're like, I actually understand what it took for people to get here. And now I want to be a better caretaker of that going forward. Mm. That's, that's kind of the role. And I don't think that's a traditional perspective on museums. And I think maybe in the past, there were some museums that didn't foster that openness. It was kind of like, you're behind, it's, it's behind glass, you're, you're barred off, don't touch, no touch, you know, restrictive. And it was kind of more talking at the community. But I can tell you, a lot of museums today, it's more about discourse than it is about dissemination. You mm -hmm. know, we, we want to have a conversation about the history and understand it from the perspective of those who both have lived it and those who are, are getting to take care of it later. And that's just, I think, a, a new perspective and something kind of different that mm -hmm. people aren't used to. And that's a big role that we're trying to play is, you know, in that engagement and discourse. Yeah. yeah. What, are, what are some other misconceptions about the museum and and what you do and what, what the museum roles are in the communities? I think one, one big misconception is that uh, something's not worth saving if it's not out for me to see. Y you know, I think part, like if you really looked at the actual role of what a museum exists for, it's to preserve our cultural items and also the input and information like if i was just a bunch of old stuff like i'd be an antique store right <laughs> but i'm a bunch no. of old stuff with context and with story and it takes a lot of investment to pr both preserve a phys physical object and make sure its story remains tied because they are constantly at war with each other trying to break apart mm. because an object gets older and the story gets forgotten and we're fighting this war of attrition of memory to try and like keep these connected and that's our primary role um and what people you know will think is they come in and it's like well why isn't this on exhibit and it's like well we're we're saving this for our understanding like we have the knowledge and we can have conversations about something that maybe is not on display and if we can keep it and preserve it and understand its context with its story then we have such a valuable gem of understanding and this snapshot in time but a lot of people are just like well if i'm going to give it to you it needs to be on display and we're like well things won't last if they're always on display because we we put them back in the right conditions we care for them appropriately we we keep them in a place that keeps it from light degrading an image or you know the 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 touch of you know someone's finger would eventually rub away the writing on something and and so that idea of like it should be always out in display and if it's not exhibited it's not worth it i think is one of the biggest things that we try to struggle to tell people wow 
So talk about your collection a little bit then. I think that's really interesting because I think from an outsider's point of view, we view museums as, as what we see. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so much more to uh, the work that you do behind the scenes. Probably, it's, I'm guessing it's terribly disproportional to the work that we see in doing the exhibits versus the collection and the preservation and all the work that is not seen. So maybe talk a little bit about, A, the work that is not seen, and B, talk about your collection. And um, I kind of lost my train of thought on, on the collection part, but, but maybe talk about your, I don't know, talk about the work that is behind the scenes. I'll fix that question in post. There you go. Yeah, thanks, Kano. If I can see him rolling his <laughs> eyes over at me. Yeah, the, the work that's behind the scenes is really being able to try to figure out you know, what is this item that we're looking at, whether it's, you know, a piece of clothing, like someone's like right now upstairs for our women's history exhibit, we have um, Val Ogden's wedding dress, which she was a, uh, a local um, government official, and she was a statewide of government official just beloved in the community. And when it's on a display, there's one way that we have to treat that. But when it's in storage, there's another way. And we have a collections manager that knows all those things and he manages it in that way. And so he makes sure that it has, you know, appropriate materials. Like it has to have certain, you know, papering and boxes and things that need to go around it so that it won't degrade. So the colors won't change. And so it stays the same. And so you're thinking, you know, you have clothing, you have paper, you have metals, you have wood, you have all of these different types of materials and all of these types of materials.